Ford has very quietly released the new 2024 F-150 Lightning electric pickup trucks with a big change. It's not really talking about it, but it will increase the range of the pickup truck. It's called a heat pump. A lot of people think that electric cars are already so incredibly efficient that there's not much more to do. There's not much more to gain in terms of efficiency, but there most certainly is. There's a whole lot of new improvements, much more efficient electric motors. There's aerodynamic efficiency. There is also the ability to drastically improve heat pumps. You might be thinking, hang on a minute, heat pumps, they're brand new technology, but actually, well, these new heat pumps are significantly better than the previous generation. Here's why. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Guys, EVs are about to get an efficiency boost from new heat pump technology. Engineers are improving EV efficiency by scavenging more heat from EV components and feeding it to the heat pump. So recently we've learned that Tesla are upgrading their software in their cars to enable the regen braking to improve efficiency. Regen braking will work a bit differently at higher speeds, which should enable your car to, to recoup more energy. But there is also other ways that that can be done. In electric vehicles, how every electron is used matters. That's especially important in heavy, aerodynamically challenged pickups and SUVs. One of those examples is the very brick-like Ford F-150 Lightning. The version that just went on sale won't look much different from the 2023 model, but engineers made a big change that will enable the vehicle to use electricity more efficiently, especially in cold weather. Now the Ford F-150 Lightning for the 2024 year, it is cheaper than the 2023 year, but it also has some changes that Ford has just kind of made without saying much about them. The Lightning has a heat pump system developed with supplier Denso. Now, Denso is actually one of Toyota's biggest suppliers, but don't write them off just because of that. They actually reduce energy consumption with these new heat pumps. Previous F-150 Lightnings have resistive heaters, which use electricity to produce heat, like the coils in a toaster. The system uses a lot of electricity. So not many people realize this. The F-150 Lightning didn't have a heat pump. Ford would not say how much the switch to using a heat pump will extend the 2024 Lightning's range in cold weather, but acknowledged the move will improve efficiency. The vehicle's EPA range estimate is unchanged from 2023. In online forums and videos, Ford Lightning owners have complained that the pickup loses 20 to 30% of its range in very cold temperatures. This will definitely decrease those losses. Although most efforts to increase EV range and efficiency involve just slapping in a bigger battery, that's what General Motors have done with the Silverado, a massive battery pack, improving chemistry, or possibly doing things like um, improving electronics, reducing curb weight, improving aerodynamics. Heat pumps play a major role though in EV efficiency as the temperature drops in particular. If you live in a warm climate, it's not gonna make a huge difference. Well, a little bit, but not a huge difference. Live in a cold climate, the difference is quite big. The heat pump enables all the other systems to do their jobs better, said Rob Cardrio, a director in Denso's Green Technology Engineering Group. Heat pumps, of course, aren't new. They have heated and cooled buildings for more than 100 years. Basically, just beginning for the automotive industry. I mean, Tesla have had them for a few years now. Most car manufacturers haven't had them, um, contrary to popular belief. Often I've made videos, people have said, oh, every, every EV has a heat pump. What are you talking about? What's the big deal about a heat pump? Well, false. In fact, categorically false. More than 50% of EVs sold over the past 12 months from legacy automakers did not come with a heat pump. So that's one thing you want to consider when you buy an EV. Don't listen to your, your bro science mate down the street just because he thinks all EVs have a heat pump. Actually do a check to make sure it does. With the first generation, engineers were just figuring out how to heat and cool a vehicle, said Mark Dawson. Most major suppliers, including Valio, Denso, Bosch, Haile Morelli, and Hanon Systems are working on second or third gen automotive heat pumps. 
Apparently, Tesla's also working on a new generation of their own heat pump as well. Unlike most components, which tend to become smaller and less expensive with successive generations, heat pumps are expected to become larger and more complex as automakers use them to collect heat from a growing number of vehicle systems. So it's not just about having a heat pump, it's about utilizing that heat pump for all the different systems across the car. If you're able to do that, it's actually quite complex, but if you're able to do that, you can get more an efficiency boost from the heat pump. So just because one EV has a heat pump and another one has it, uh, they may actually work very differently because of how they're connected to the rest of the car. We can take advantage of heat scavenging opportunities in the electronic axle, and we can move that energy around to preserve battery charge, said engineers working on the latest heat pumps. So how do they work? Heat pumps are responsible for cooling and heating the vehicle's interior, the battery pack, the power electronics, and several other parts of an EV. Now, you might be thinking, well, how's that all that, how does that really matter? Well, when you charge your battery, if you preheat the battery, it will charge much faster. So some EVs enable that, well, the ability to do that. Keeping those components at the proper temperatures is key to EV efficiency. In cold weather, the battery pack will enable longer driving ranges if it is preconditioned, or warmed before the vehicle leaves the driveway. In hot weather, the batteries, power electronics, and charger need to be cooled for efficiency and safety. The major components of a heat pump include a compressor, condenser, evaporator, expansion valve, and a refrigerant, either liquid or gas. In a nutshell, a heat pump removes and transfers heat from air or from components. The refrigerant inside the heat pump system is either heated or it's cooled. Air passing over the condenser changes temperature, heating or cooling the cabin. In an internal combustion vehicle, the engine's coolant when it warms up is the source of heat for the interior, while the air conditioning system in a separate circuit from the heater relies on a compressor, condenser, evaporator and refrigerant to cool the interior. You can see it's actually relatively complex. Heat pumps share several of the same components as traditional heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems, and at least one trait as well. Whenever either system is in operation, the vehicle uses either more gasoline or more electricity. But engineers say there are lots of areas where heat pump efficiency can be improved. A Tesla's OctoValve is one example of where you can push the limits of heat pump design, but Tesla even are not particularly happy with that. They believe they can improve it. At Denso, engineers have taken a modular approach to improvements. For example, combining the valves that were spread throughout the vehicle into a single manifold, reduced the number of hoses and connections and therefore lessens the chances of uh, leaks and of efficiency being lost. One of the most promising areas where efficiency can be gained is the software that controls the pump. It comes down to how well you understand where the energy is going, when it is going to get there, what the physics are, and the dynamics that are happening in that moment in time. What are the options? Well, there's actually a few. The next generation of Valio's heat pump will likely weigh less, consume less energy, and deliver heat faster, said the company. The more heat that can be captured from the EV's mechanical and electrical components, the less electricity is needed to produce that heat. Suppliers are looking at different liquids and gases, such as propane, says Automotive News. They say that in the heat pump system, some heat pumps use the same refrigerant as air conditioning systems, while others use glycol, the coolant that's in a combustion vehicle's radiator. Despite heat pumps using less electricity than resistive heaters, significantly less, they are not likely to replace them completely because of cost and other factors. Some EV manufacturers, they haven't really gotten to that position yet with their software or with their technology to actually deploy them successfully or to really, you know, it to be really worth the cost of them doing it. For a heat pump to work at top efficiency for the lowest cost, Suppliers have to be involved in the vehicle's design when the car is being engineered. If they're not, it doesn't really work very well. For instance, an EV's computer system generates a lot of heat, can actually be cooled by a heat pump. But if the car is not engineered for the heat pump's plumbing to be safely routed to the computer, a retrofit isn't really a great idea. 
Resistive heaters are likely to remain in lower priced EVs, say experts, because of cost. And in more expensive vehicles, they could be paired with heat pumps to deliver heat faster in cold weather. So resistive heaters are not going to disappear anytime soon. Could they eventually? Yeah, it's very possible. Regardless of how heat pumps evolve, suppliers are hoping their consumers' experiences with heat pumps mirror those of Connecticut graphic artist Blake Tovin. He doesn't notice the performance of the heater in cold weather on the air conditioner in the summer. Or the air conditioner in the summer when he drives his Polestar 2, his first electric car. He said, you know, the system just works. And the terrain on range in winter when the car is cold was not a consideration when he leased the car back in 2021. Tobin's 15-minute commute to work is comfortable in cold weather. He uses the heaters in the steering wheel and seat to stay comfortable as the car warms up. This is actually one way you can significantly increase efficiency in your car. Don't turn on the heater, just use the seat heater or the steering wheel heater as well. That's a lot more efficient than trying to warm up the entire car using a normal resistive heater. If there is a gripe, he said though, digging in the screens to find the right settings is bothersome, but the performance of the heat pump has been flawless. It, obviously not just Tesla are using heat pumps now. Many, many, many manufacturers are, but just because a car is more expensive than another doesn't mean it is. For example, many Mercedes EVs last year didn't have heat pumps in them. So make sure before you buy your car, if you live in a cold environment that you focus on getting in a car that's efficient, but not just efficient, but also efficient in cold weather. For that to happen, you're going to want a heat pump. Thanks for watching.